Yeah, so I grew up in a, an extremely Catholic household, really loving family, but you followed the rules and you didn't ask too many questions. It was just, um, you know, be a good person and uh, yeah, don't break the mold. And so I think um, that was really stifling at times and kind of restrictive. So I'd actually gone to Catholic school from third through eighth grade and then switched over to Lincoln. And again, that was that period that I was really trying to figure out who I was. And so, you know, initially I was hanging out with jocks or like playing basketball. And then I think like the chronic came out and I wanted to be a gangster or something. <laughs> like really fit the bill. And, um, and then a prep and everything. And then it was just this sort of natural progression to be like, oh no, those like, I like what's going on over here. This is, this make this like, it is breaking the mold that's making me think independently and differently than I've ever thought before. And I think I had also always known that I was going to get out of Sioux Falls. And so that provided me, yeah, again, that escape while I was still there. Uh, I was lucky enough to have an older sibling to kind of introduce me to people. And I realized at that point that I, um, they were doing things they were kind of rejecting Midwest norms and ideals in a way that I, I, I found attractive or kind of inspirational or something, like maybe um, norms of what to eat. Around that time, like I became vegetarian, I think. That might have been 1997. But uh, they were cooking their own food and living in, in like communal houses and taking care of themselves and dressing differently and um, eschewing the sorts of Midwestern consumerism and kind of groupthink that that I was that seemed really cool to me, and so that that was sort of what I was attracted to. Also, girls didn't look like girls, and boys were affectionate with boys, and that seemed really cool to me. I never, uh, yeah, I hadn't seen that as much, you know. Let's see, I moved to Minneapolis from Sioux Falls and ended up getting a job at AmeriCorps there, but it was at the Sustainable Resources Center with some punks who, and we went into low-income homes um, where children had been diagnosed with lead poisoning and we replaced windows and like scraped the walls, um, painted the walls and, and built organic uh, flatbed gardens just to, to help prevent, um, like a healthy diet can help prevent lead poisoning. And, uh, and that was another like level of exposure to, I was working with some like, some punks who had like this extensive experience growing their own food. That was really cool. Um, and then later I worked at the Seward Co-op and um, that also was this like alternative sort of community of people who wanted to live differently and intentionally, just a different consumer model, you know? And I think that led to all those jobs that I had then sort of led me here because I realized, yeah, I don't want to, I wasn't interested in just, I don't know how to describe it. I didn't really want to just make money and not care about how I was making my money, you know? And um, so I got really lucky when I got this job <laughs> because it's, a, I mean, I'm a cog in the wheel. I work for the federal government, but we're kind of the outsiders too. The federal public defenders, you know, we're, we're fighting the U.S. Attorney's Office. The prosecutors were fighting the, well, you know, it's, it's a uh, adversarial relationship. So I think that that does tie. I think I, I like to identify as someone who's maybe rooting for the outsider or interested in their perspective.